So Gee, I'm going to start this segment, Jay, with this. I hate to okay. say I told you so. wish I had the time to go back and find this clip. I think we were out in Yellowstone and we talked about RV campgrounds and I talked about, I almost, I think I didn't want to talk about it on the air because I knew somebody would take my idea and run with it. But then I sort of just went, I don't have time to do it. So here you go. And I pointed to the fact that there's already 50 amp service at most RV campgrounds. Not state mm-hmm. parks, but actual private campgrounds. Yeah, campgrounds. And um, that is oftentimes all that's needed to hook up a, a fast charger for your EV. Yeah, okay, so, so back to ahead. Tesla. So back. we've talked, Jay, at Jay brought this up most recently on one of our last podcasts, but Teslas really are kind of becoming an ideal tow-behind vehicle for RVers. And one of the reasons, Jay, that you brought up was well, hey, you've got 50 amp service in an RV park and a lot of these yeah. parks, 30 amp at least if they have electricity. Mm-hmm. A lot mm-hmm. of them have 50 amp. Dude, you could charge your Tesla while you're, you know, plugged in overnight. But now we have. Would you say that you think that somebody is paying attention here? I mean, could they have listened to our wonder, right? So could they have watched our video. So they're there. And, you know, the amount of time that it would take to you to charge your EV at a fast charge is you know an hour ish or less Mm -hmm. yeah and these campgrounds that are basically you know have open spots every day until people come in i mean you know they could almost do charging windows of you know if checkout's 11 a.m you do it from like 11 a.m to 3 p.m and you know free space yeah yeah i mean it's just extra revenue the infrastructure is already there well go ahead jay what 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 has now transpired but this is it blows my mind because you said it you were you were out on the road and you said you know they could they could they could put these here don't tell me you can't charge an electric vehicle they're everywhere so koa everybody's uh familiar with uh, campgrounds of america um they're all over the country um they are looking for an in- innovative way to to make their campgrounds uh, more environmentally friendly and to reduce their carbon footprint. And they are doing this. Uh, and to our knowledge, this is the first of its kind. Well, any any KOA campground, they're going to have level uh, two charging stations uh, in partnership with uh, Jamestown Advanced Products. Um, and it's their goal to uh, promote uh, sustainable transportation and infrastructure at KOA campgrounds. Yeah, so James Jamestown is making the wall uh, the wall box Pulsar Plus, which is the little charging connector um, right. that you plug into your EV. I mean, let's be honest; they're also looking for revenue opportunities, which you know, good for them. Like I said, like your your the expense, the overhead, the hardware, most of it's already there. The cost to do this is nominal compared to you know those power poles are already there. The fifty amp it's already run they may have to change out the box on top they may have to play, pay some electricians to do that that's going to pay for itself in the first week of charging easily i think so right i mean i think so and what's nice and and this will this will segue into another another part of this segment because we're going to we're going to put all these together and we're going to talk about all this is that more and more and we we spoke about this earlier in the podcast more and more People are going off road, but they're they are they're wanting to get they're they're not working uh, at an office anymore. They can work anywhere. If you have an RV or a trailer, um, but you have an a, an EV that is capable of pulling something uh, that is light enough to get out, like say a Rivian R one T truck or their R one S that's coming out. Um, this is an ideal situation because you can have your cake and eat it too. You can 
continue to be in, environmentally friendly, use your EV, not have that fear of a charging problem, not getting not being able to get it charged. And why this is important is because the infrastructure is already there. Like you said, Keith, it's just a it's just a matter of making a slight modification to the already existing power poles that are there or power um, stations that are there uh, in these pullouts and pull-ins. Um, the, what's also great is they already have a network of how to find these things. Yeah. It's there. There's no – the only effort to this is to – Put the charging station. Yeah, I mean, in place honestly, if you it. already own an EV and you carry charging hardware in your vehicle, front, trunk, mm-hmm. whatever, which most of you do, right? And 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 I mean, like the thing that'll plug into the actual receptacle on the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't even need this. You can just go to any campground that has 50 amp service and charge up. Like, right? They're just basically giving you the connector that goes straight into your vehicle. That's the only difference. Right. And now, why is this? so important other than i mean this is not only important for the campers or the rvers of the world but just anybody who owns an electric vehicle and i'll give you a fine example i have a cousin who owns a tesla model 3 was driving from florida with his mother and coming into the rural areas of georgia and south carolina he had to be very careful that he stayed near interstates um, that had uh, charging stations in place, and obviously Tesla has the app, you know, where you can go find their their superchargers or whatever. Um, he had to go a certain way rather than a way that I would have normally yeah. gone in order to go by the charging station to get a full charge and move on. Now, why is this important? Is because this gives another layer of potential charging stations in rural areas because there are a lot of KOA campgrounds in rural areas. Yeah. They're not in huge areas, right? right? I mean, they're there too, but... And just just think, because KOA's doing this, don't you think Good Sam's going to jump on? Well, and right, we Good Sam is owned by Camping World, and we've al- already talked about them trying to partner with some manufacturers to integrate battery capability in the RVs that you tow, uh, you know? Mm-hmm. And now you've got Outdoorsy coming out and saying basically something similar with um, them wanting... They're basically um, acknowledging that more and more people are going to be towing RVs, whatever those towables mm-hmm. are, campers, right. with an EV. The R- Rivian's out in production now, which, by mm-hmm. the way, they've announced a significant, like, you, there's like a, if you tow something heavy, you you, you lose 67% of your range. Well, well duh, duh. I mean, right. why are you yeah. surprised? I mean, if I tow something with a V8 engine, I don't get the gas mileage that I get, you know, if it's... Right heavy right right and that's why they have big tanks to hold excess amount of fuel for those situations but so that's where we think so camping world saying hey we're going to put an extra battery bay in a towable well now outdoorsy's doing the same thing go go ahead jay right well then not only that that's why you see these ev ev makers like for example the ford f-150 lightning they are going to be providing uh, you the opportunity to put in more battery packs in the bed of the pickup truck, almost like a toolbox section of the of the of the bed of the truck. So the the manufacturers are very aware of um, the towing capability, but they're also very aware of the uh, amount of um, energy that it takes to um, to pull that. So this is why this is key to making this work. This is another bridge to us getting to where we need to be. Well, in the EV world, and, and this is it. And like we said in a previous segment, right, this is not the end. Well, think about this mm-hmm. for a second. So you have Outdoorsy who's renting RVs, and they're saying, we want to get into the EV market for towables. Mm-hmm. Right. What happens, Jay, if somebody puts... Here, here we go again. I'm going to say this out loud, and then next thing you know, it's going to happen, and we're not going to get paid. But it's it's all right. I don't have time, so somebody else might as well. <laughs> put solar panels on the roof of your towable. Put a battery bank in that RV that's capable of transferring power back to the EV, the, the vehicle that's towing. And you perpetually have additional range if towing in the daytime because those solar panels will continue to trickle charge through a charge controller, your reserve battery pack. And 
Why is that important? Because it may be a hundred miles before you can get to a a you know a fast charger, a level two charging station. So, so here's a scenario. Let's say you go somewhere like Glacier National Park or Yellowstone or somewhere that you know you've got to drive to get into Yellowstone. It's 40, 40 plus miles to get you know into the center of the park. Let's say you tow in with a Rivian, and by the time you get to the park, you only have fifty miles of range left. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in that park, I don't believe they have electricity. I believe it's dry camping. Might be wrong there, but I know a lot of national parks are dry camping. Well, you have solar panels on the roof of your towable RV. You have a battery bay inside. You, you're camping for three days. Across those three days, that battery gets fully recharged. You then transfer that power back to your tow vehicle. You're now back to a 50, 75% charge. You haven't moved. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know who comes to my mind when, when we're talking about this, about the towable having that extra battery bay for that purpose? Look at what Toyota just released, the TRD Sport um, trailer. Right. It's just, it's just basically a trailer made out of the bed of a Toyota Tacoma, but it is built to go off the grid. Well, why don't you pack that thing full of battery packs? And it it, it came equipped with... You know, you could equip it with solar panels. It had a camp kitchen, had all these things on it, and it's a towable that could be towed by a Rivian R1T or a Ford F-150 Lightning. So there, there's a lot of thought going into this. And, and again, the growth is, is unbelievable. And why do we bring up Outdoorsy is because they have just um, uh, purchased a fleet of, what, 1,000 R1Ts to, to make this work. I think it's 1,000. Um which is pretty amazing for for a company like that. So it's a it's a outdoorsy is a rent, a camper rental company that wants you to have the opportunity to be able to tow with an electric vehicle. They're they're not forcing that on you. They are giving you the opportunity to do it for those that do want to do it. Well, and it's not going away for a lot of reasons. And I'll give you mm. another example. Um, there's there's something that I just recently had to book airfare for for my family into next year and a lot of the airlines have gone and taken this approach now of unless you pay a premium price those tickets are non-refundable and mm -hmm. you know i don't know um if there's going to be another lockdown i know there's ex there's more variants coming out every day companies can make decisions shows can get canceled events can get canceled things can happen outside of our control or what happens if a member of my family gets exposed and, and they're on protocol for a week and a half or, you know, whatever right. and can't go out? And we, either way, we would have to cancel. Well, something like this basically takes that, you know, yes, you have to drive and it's longer, but it's almost less risky in some ways. Right. You know, there is the right. driving, you know, safety factor compared to air travel. But, I you know, I just think we're not done, like we keep saying. No, and you're right. And that's that scenario right there was not at all beyond my um choice to go across country as well when we were locked down right was to see if i could go rent a, a camper and just go across country and not stay at hotels and crash at campsites so i mean it's not going away guys um in fact hertz hertz rent a car um has placed an order with uh tesla uh for a uh, hundred thousand um of their i think model threes um now granted elon musk did come out and say that there was no they had no written contract agreement but they did place the order i forget how many billions of dollars it was but it was a pretty hefty well price tag it's an interest in going forward at the very least right yeah i i think it is and i think it ties into everything that we're talking about because you got to have the infrastructure to charge them yep um, and again, if you've already got those types of things in place, this just kind of opens that door up for uh, rental companies to to do this. Or if you're a consumer, you want to buy your, your own electric vehicle. Um, what we call um, range anxiety is basically taken out of the yeah. out of the out of the play. So I think it's a good move. Um, congrats to KOA on that. Yeah. Yeah. And good for you, yeah. Outdoorsy. You're welcome. <laughs>